Hi everyone, welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, welcome. It is great to be back with you for another week of, uh, or another day I should say, of um, card making. I have got um, a pretty card for you today, lots of colour happening today. Uh, and we're going to be playing with the new in colours that are coming out in the new catalogue. So stick around if you'd like to see that. Now, um, I do film this over on Facebook as a live, um, a Facebook Live. And so we do have a little bit of chat because um, my viewers like to come on. We have a little chat. We talk about what's been happening and uh, it's part of the creative experience. But if you're watching the replay and you don't want to um, listen to any of the chat, that's okay. Feel free just to fast forward through until you um, get to the point that you are looking for with the uh, the crafting. Um, but it's part of what we do and uh, yeah, it's just lots of fun. Alrighty, so let me get uh, this live up on my other devices so that I can see everybody's comments. Just bear with me one moment while I get that all happening okay here we go oh i'm actually yep that's right okay i feel like i'm half asleep today <laughs> all right there we go okay oh good now i must get that down and that down otherwise i will forget to put them on my desk later on so how is everyone let me know how you are in the comments and if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for being here. Um, and thank you for those uh, to those of you who are coming live as well, of course. Um, but I really appreciate those who take the time out to watch the replay also. So thank you so much. And um, if you do watch the replay, feel free to let me know in the comments that you're watching the replay. And if you have um, anything... Oh, I'm going <coughs> to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, if you... Um, want to ask me any questions or um yeah share anything with me or ask me you know um post any comments or anything like that feel free sorry blank see told you i was tired <laughs> um feel free to pop those in the comments i do go back and look um look at those comments and reply to them um as much as possible so um yeah so it's part of the fun of what we do Alrighty, so there is lots of fun things happening coming up this week, in fact, in just a couple of days. So we'll talk about that. Um, but first of all, let's share a little bit about our weekend. How was everyone's weekend? What did you get up to? Um, if you're here live with me, feel free to say hi. Um, if it's your first time watching with me, let me know where you are watching from. And um, we can have a little chat for a few moments until we get started uh, with our crafting while we're waiting for everybody to find their notifications that I've gone live. Um, so sometimes that takes a few minutes and then people will start joining. So um, yeah, I had a pretty quick, pretty quiet weekend. I did go out yesterday for lunch with a friend, which was really lovely. And um, I got a little bit lost along the way, but <laughs> it's all good. Thankfully, for thankful, I'm very thankful for Google Maps because thankfully I'd printed out, I'd studied it on, on the computer and then I'd printed out the Google Maps directions of how to get there because my um, navigator in my car wanted to take me a completely different direction and kept on trying to reroute me different ways. And I'm like, no, I kind of know where I'm going, like the main part of there. It was just the last little bit I wasn't sure of. And um, thankfully I had my, my uh, old school printed out map because that's the one that I followed and um, I got there in the end but I did take a couple of I didn't take wrong turns but I had to pull over just to double check where I was to make sure I was on the right track and I got there I had terrible traffic on the way though I got there late because I got on the um, the motorway and it was just at a standstill because there'd been a crash further up and so they were clearing all that away and um, yeah it just slowed me right down but all good. Thank you for um, uh, jumping on, everybody. It's great to see you jumping on. Feel free to chat with me. Um, so, yeah, and then Saturday, I just had a pretty cruisy day, pretty pretty quiet day on Saturday. Didn't do too much. Um, 
yeah, so it was a lovely weekend, a lovely quiet weekend. Sometimes we need those, don't we? Just to, to wind down and um, things are going to ramp up this week. It's going to be a busy, busy week. So I just felt like I just needed to take a little bit of time, a little bit of chill time. And I've got a hair here tickling me somewhere on my, my shirt. It's not annoying. Do you mulch as well? <laughs> I found it. It was um, stuck to my shirt. It was tickling my arm. All right. Well, you might notice my little brooch today. I've got a new little brooch. This is my little Maltese terrier because, of course, we have a Maltese terrier, Callie. But this is Mark the Maltese, little little Mark. He's a little um, mini erstwhile brooch, and he is super duper cute. In fact, he's a remake of an older brooch. Um, they've re-released him in a mini rather than a standard size. And um, the standard size one I had been looking for, trying to hunt down for a long time. Um, but it's hard to get. I wanted the, because the, there's a boy version and a girl version. I wanted the girl version because we've always had female. Well, actually, I haven't always had female dogs, but my last few dogs have been female dogs. And Callie, of course, our Maltese we have now, is a female dog. So I wanted to get the little girl one, but couldn't find her. And she's very rare to find. But as soon as they put out this one in a mini, I thought, no, I definitely have to grab that one. So, so I still say this is my little Callie and she's got a blue bow <laughs> on her collar <laughs> rather than in her hair. Um, so yeah, and I nearly forgot, which is why I was a few minutes late. I nearly forgot to put her on, uh, put my brooch on today. Usually I put them on in the morning when I'm getting ready, but I had a meeting this morning and well, at lunchtime, well, midday. And um, as I was getting ready this morning, you're at Melbourne Airport, Rose. Hello from Melbourne Airport. You love my, my little brooch, my little Maltese brooch. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and as I was getting ready this morning, I was thinking about getting ready for the um, the meeting and totally forgot about putting my brooch on. Now, two secs. I've got to grab a tissue because I've just finished eating um, a very late lunch and now my nose is wanting to drip. <laughs> I'm not sick. It's okay. It's just my sinuses are, um, yeah, are a bit odd, and when I eat, my nose runs. Um, so yes, my mum had the same problem. So born of good stock, bad sinuses. <laughs> so if you see me dabbing my nose, please forgive me. Not good to have a runny nose when you're filming, but it is what it is. Now I'm not seeing. Oh, here we go. I am seeing comments now. I wasn't seeing comments down here on my iPad. They were coming up on my phone, um, but now I can see them on my iPad, so it's all good. So, um, yes, so have you just flown, so you're just flying back, Rose, by the sounds of it, um, making, making your way back down south. That's great. All right. Well, um, let me share with you a couple of things. Um, I received a beautiful, beautiful card this week and I wanted to share that with you. Um, I'll just take it out of the little baggie. I received this card from one of my beautiful friends, Leslie, and um, this one is using some of the new products that are coming out in the new catalogue as well. Um, the Layers of Beauty Bundle. Isn't this just so stunning, this card? Absolutely gorgeous. So it uses the, the stamps and dies, and there are decorative masks as well to color the stamps. So rather than two-step stamping or using your stamping medium, which you still, you still can use your, uh, sorry, coloring mediums, you still can use your coloring mediums because you do get the outline of the stamp as well. Um, but it comes with decorative masks if you get the bundle. And you can use the masks, they um, they have different layers, and you can do them to layer your colours. So that one is going to be in my next order because I saw this card. I've seen the, the um, bundle and I really liked it, but I thought, oh, I haven't used one like that before. I'm not sure. And then when I received Leslie's card, I'm like, that's it. I'm getting it. It's so beautiful. So, and I love the colours she's used. She's used some of the new in colours that are coming out. So we've got Petunia Pop and um, Pretty in Pink for the ribbon, um, which is really beautiful. And what else did she use? Oh, and she's used the new 2024 to 2026 Shimmer Gems. So see if you can pick up on those. There's some up here. There's another one over here. 
Um, and oh yes and the colors that she's used to color the flowers are the two new two of the new in colors the um pretty in pink and the petunia pop so i really love that color combo isn't it gorgeous so thank you so much leslie and the whole card is all shimmery as well so she spritzed the whole card with shimmer i don't know if you'll see that on camera with the lights but it's the whole thing is all shimmery it's beautiful so I just wanted to share that with, with everybody. So thank you for that card, Leslie. I really love it. So it's going to go up on my display shelf. Now that I've shown in everybody, I can put it up on my display shelf. It'll go up there. So we've only got, today is, um, oh, hey, Pam. Hey, Glenda. Great to have you here, ladies. Um, we've only got a couple more days. Today is the 29th of April. So we've got today and tomorrow left of the current annual catalogue and the mini catalogue. So that means there's only two more days of the last chance product sales because then all of those products are going to retire on oh, my nose again. They're going to retire and be gone for good. So remember that there's still some great bargains. I was just having a look um, before I came online, actually, I was just having a look in the um, inventory status report because the other thing is too, and I did send this out in my newsletter. So if you're not part of my newsletter, then um, please feel free to subscribe to my newsletter so that you can be kept up to date. But I did let all my new newsletter subscribers know that there is some price increases coming from the 1st of May as well. Things like your cardstock, some of the tools, some of the adhesives, some other bits and pieces. So if there's any of those staple sort of products that you wanted, um, then be sure to grab those while you can. And there is, I was looking at the list, um, people have been snapping them up because there's quite a few colours that are currently unavailable um, and some assortment packs and things like that that are currently unavailable. But there is lots still available. Quite a few things on low inventory as well. Um, so yeah, so definitely grab those things. And I was looking to see, this is what I wanted to check to see, um, about, hey, Megan, how are you? How are you feeling this week? Are you improving? I hope so. Um, so I was just having a look to see how many things have already sold out from the current annual catalog and the mini catalog that are retiring. And the list is getting long. So the best thing to do is to go to the online store and have a look directly there to see what is still available. Um, yeah, so if you had a wish list of items that you'd wanted and you were waiting, then make sure you get them. Um, there'll still be some things there that are discounted, but you've only got a couple more days. So be sure to grab those while you can. All right. Um, Now, where was I? Oh, here. Okay, sorry, I had to open up the other screen again. Um, all right, now the other thing I wanted to let you know, because we've got the new catalogue coming out, so hang on a minute, I've got all of my bits. <laughs> I've got lists and lists of stuff that I keep in the front of my catalogue, so just quickly whip them out so you don't see all my lists. But this is the new annual catalogue. Um, if you haven't yet seen it, it's available from the 1st of May. You can start ordering from the 1st of May. Um, those of us who are demonstrators have been able to pre-order some of the items already. So we're going to be playing with some of those today. And um, you can see I've already started my wish list here. And these are all my tabs to help me find things in the new catalogue. So I can't show you the inside until the 1st, which is Wednesday. Wednesday. Then I'll, um, at some stage, I'll probably do a little bit of a, a catalogue walkthrough or something. Um, haven't decided when I'm doing that yet, but, you know, watch out for that. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia and you'd like one of these catalogues, please let me know. Um, and I'd love to send one out to you. So, in fact, I'm going to put my links up in the comments right now. And they will be in the description of the video as well. Uh, because you can request a catalogue there as well as see all of my other links. You can find my um, my shop link. And if you're looking for product, um, you will find all of my other. Um, oh, and there's one other thing I was going to share with you too. And the link will also be in this one. 
there you go so that's my link tree link it's a link tree because it branches off into all my other links so when you open it up you can see all the different places you can go and then you could tell then you can choose where um, you'd like to navigate to all right um... Oh, Megan says, I'd like to tell you yes, but unfortunately, I now have another setback with another infection. Oh, no. I'm back to hospital clinic tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Megan. Oh, that's no good at all. Oh, dear. Well, hopefully, the um, hospital clinic will get you back on the right track and get you um, healed up. All right. So, with the new catalogue, I have... A product share coming out well there's several product shares well not several there's three there's three different product shares in my product shares this time so sometimes I just do paper sometimes I, I do paper and ribbon this time I'm doing um, an in color share I'm doing oh, let me make sure I get it right I'm doing an in color share um, in color ribbons and embellishment shares and then i'm doing a designer series paper share as well so there's the three different ones there you can choose from there's a qr code here if you click on if you um open up photos on your phone hold that over the qr code and then what will happen is it'll scan it and you'll come up with a little yellow um, link at the bottom click on that link and it takes you through to the registration page and that'll give you all the information um, and the registration form to register for my um, product shares and the registrations are closing this Thursday so I still have some available so um, be sure to register for those if you'd like to get in on those and again if you um, are not confident using a QR code then the link is in the comments as well in that link tree link um, so be sure to to check that out and see what's available and jump on those product shares so you might be wondering what a product share is basically it's um, a part pack of each of the the items that are in in the individual shares so as I said I've got the color card stock and the um, and the sorry the in color color card stock and the in color um, paper share so that means and rather than you get a whole pack or rather than you paying for a whole pack that maybe you won't use you get a partial pack and it outlines in my registration form how much you get of each thing um, with the color the ribbons and the embellishments you'll get um, a certain number of meters of the ribbon you'll get a certain portion of the um, embellishments depending on the embellishments um, usually it's a quarter pack um, but it depends on the embellishments and how many are in them and with the designer series paper um, it's all quarter packs so you'll get a quarter share or a quarter pack of each of the um, designer series papers that I've got listed there there's 10 different packs of papers and you'll get a quarter share of each of those so it's a great affordable way of getting your hands on lots and lots of product without having to outlay for you know the entire pack because if you bought a full pack of every one of those DSPs you might not use them all um, and that would add up as well so it's a way that um, you get your hands on lots and lots of products in a really affordable way so be sure to check that out and um, yeah and uh, I'd love to have you register for that before um, Thursday Thursday is the last day Thursday the 2nd of May last day to register for that okay all righty um, okay did I already say hi to you Pam I'm not sure if I I'm not sure if I already said hello to you if I didn't hi Pam thank you for joining us sorry I'm just scrolling back through the comments now and I'm not sure if I already said hello to you before or not um, it's great to have you with us all right well how about we jump into some crafting I'll show you what we're going to be playing with today or oh, actually let me just put that over there and that over there all right, so I'm going to um, tip the camera down onto the desk. I'll just move my keyboard because we don't need that. Um, feel free to craft along with me if you'd like to. Uh, you can. I'm going to be using some of the new ink colors today, some of the new stamp sets and dies. Um, feel free to use whatever you have on your craft desk, whatever um, projects you want to work on. 
and um, I hope that you'll get some creative inspiration today from what I'm showing you and maybe some tips and tricks along the way as well. All right, so I'm going to cover up the camera to tip it down onto the desktop so we can get started. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I talk about or that I show you, um, please feel free to ask me because I'm happy to answer your questions. All right, here we go. So let's cover up. I'll flip those cameras. Get this down onto the desktop. And we'll be ready to play. So today's project I already have designed. So I'm not winging it today. However, I am changing a few things to the project. Sorry, my voice is probably changing and trailing a little bit as I move around the camera. There we go. All right. Oh, that's not straight. Let's get that straight. Back that way, I think. Is that better? Or would that make it worse? Well, that's a bit better. Okay. I like to have a nice straight camera because otherwise everything will be wonky and um, that will be annoying. All right. So, as I said, we're using brand new products that are coming out in the new catalogue today. So if you are looking for them, you're going to find them. Um, you're going to find my online store either through my blog or through my website. You can find it in both places. Just look for the shop button or the shop now button and you can click on that. Um, how are those lights looking on the desktop? Are they? Let's just readjust those a little bit. How's that? Is that okay? Alrighty. So... We are going, I'll show you what we're using first before I show you um, before I show you what we are creating. Just grab my my tub. So we've got the new in colors here. So let's just I've got these I had these all nicely ordered last night and I've been playing around with them and they're all out of order now. It's all good. All right, so we have got these um, five new in colors. Now the in colors, they stick around for two years, okay? So we've got our standard color color range or our, um, our color collection. And I like to call them a color families, but they're called color collections and they stay all year round. And then we always have two separate um, in color collections and each one lasts for two years so they kind of have like a year overlap between them um, but this is the 2024 to 2026 in colors okay so these ones will be hanging around for a little while and I love these colors these are a really pretty um, in color range so we've got pretty in pink petunia pop and I have shown these before so you might have seen me show these um, pecan pie summer splash and shy shamrock now, I'm still getting my head around these two, the Shy Shamrock and the Petunia Pop. I keep on getting them mixed up. So if I get them mixed up, please feel free to pull me up <laughs> while I, I'm still getting my head around them. Um, but they're a beautiful, beautiful color range. Aren't they just so pretty? And at first when I saw these two, I thought, oh, wow, they're really close in color. But in fact, they're actually not that close in color. Um, the Shy Shamrock is more sort of greeny based. And the summer splash is more sort of bluey based, um, so it is a blue a blue green, I suppose, but it's more blue um, than green. So, um, oh, peach pie, peach pie. Did I say pecan pie? Oh my goodness, peach pie. Thank you, Glenda. <laughs> you know why? Because we've also got pecan pie. So. How many times am I going to call this new one pecan pie is, is the question. See if you can keep track of how many times I call it the wrong color today. <laughs> so we've got pecan pie and now we've got peach pie. So I've got to remember which one, which one is which and see I've already mucked up today. <laughs> oh, and we've got pumpkin pie too. We do. We've got three pies. We have two. I forgot about that one. Pecan pie, peach pie. So you can see the difference between the two. Pecan pie is much more um, orange and peach pie is more sort of your apricot color. 
And then pecan pie is more um, brownie colour, like a pecan. So there's all our different yummy pies. <laughs> How many pies can we make with those? <laughs> uh, yeah. So there we go. So, yes, yeah, so I have to make sure that I say the right thing, but... I want to see how many other demonstrators are going to call call this new one the wrong colour. <laughs> Which pie is it? Which pie is it? <laughs> All right, so we're playing with, with um, those colour products today. So I've got the ink pads. I've got embellishments. I've got ribbons. Um, I've got the markers. I've got the DSP, the paper. Uh, sorry, the cardstock. We've got everything in this colour range. So, whoops. Hang on a sec. Dropping things over here. This is the, so these are the stamp and write markers. I also do have the in colors in the um, stamp and blends as well, but we're not using stamp and blends today. Um, I will be well. I did use markers on my first card, but I thought we might do we might change it up a little bit today. So I'll show you. Hang on a minute. Where's the other one? It's hiding. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, there they are. There they all are. So if you look at the cardstock, you'll see the cardstock um, can look a little bit different to the sticker on the the um, ink pad. So never kind of go by the stickers on the ink pad because also, too, the stickers can um, fade over time as well. So don't, don't gauge the true color by the sticker on the stamp pad ever. Um, always make sure you either stamp the ink or you check the cardstock. All right, so there's the beautiful cardstock, so you can see um, all the lovely colours. And we have got the Designer Series paper that also coordinates as well, so we're going to be using that too. Now, you can see I've been using mine because I've chopped up some of the pieces. So this one has um, 40 sheets in total in the pack. These, um, the cardstock and the... Um, designer series paper is part of the um, in color share that I've got as well um, also the embellishments and the ribbons are too so these papers have got um, so there's four different patterns in here okay so you've got these these two patterns in each of the colors and then if you flip them over you've got your stripes and spots okay so you've got the four patterns in each of the in colors and they coordinate with of course all the other in color products so there you go I'll give you a little flick through those so you can see them and that's a lot of paper so you might not use an entire pack of 40 sheets of this paper okay so by taking up the um, the share opportunity the product share opportunity um, just trying to find my flyer where did I put it oh here then you will get um, you will get some of those products rather than a full pack so that you're not going to you'll get a quarter pack so that you're not going to waste you know a lot that you're not going to use so yeah okay so be sure to uh, to check that out okay so that's what we're playing with today um, the stamp sets I'll show you those as well Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Okay, I just dropped all of my cardstock on the floor. <laughs> so, <laughs> two secs while I grab that. Have a look here at these beautiful stamp sets that we're going to use. And this one here has dies that coordinate, which we're going to be using as well. The Flower of Beauty dies. So, we're going to be using those. Oh, I put my markers away. And um, the Unbounded Love, this is a beautiful sentiment stamp set. Sorry, I've got the lights just reflecting there. Let me just move those a little bit out of the way. Just trying to see how far I can move them without putting you in the total darkness. It's a little bit dark now. I'll move it back in a minute. Um, but yeah, these ones are really beautiful. So we're using this one, obviously, for the sentiment. And the Flowers of Beauty stamp set doesn't have sentiments, so we needed to use that one. Um, I've done a little sample card up with this one too, which I'll show you in a minute. But let me just grab my cardstock off the floor. Okay, I won't try to put that back in my tub again for fear it's going to fall out again. <laughs> um, let's have a look at some of these sentiments in this stamp set. So we've got 
um, hope, love, and faith. And then we've got little, um, little verses that sort of go with that. So we've got hope is believing in a brighter tomorrow. Love never gives up. Faith is being sure of what we cannot see. Um, we've got peace as well makes the world a better place. And then we've got lots of other little sentiments. Best of luck, you're a true blessing, little one, friend, you've got this, feel better soon. So you can incorporate those with these larger um, words as well because they are all individual. They're not connected to that, to the rest of that um, verse there. But celebrate, hello, you are loved, friend. May all your wishes come true. Have a blessed day with sympathy. My heart goes out to you, just for you, to and yours, and happy birthday. So this stamp set, I love a good sentiment stamp set, but this one covers a range of um, occasions. So it's a really, really fantastic one if you're looking, um, you're looking for a, stamp, a sentiment stamp set that covers a lot of different occasions. So I love that one. Um, the Flowers of Beauty, I had a little play with that the other day because I was creating um, a card for an upcoming um, an upcoming tutorial. Um, so this, which isn't the card we're looking at today, um, we'll be making a different one. But this is some of the samples that I made using the stamp set. So let me just, um, just move the dies out of the way for a minute. So with this one, I tried different things. Um, so the images on the cover are at 85%. So you can see with the flower, like it's quite a bit bigger. Okay. And um, yeah, so it's a two-step stamp set. So you've got the outline and then you've got the, what I like to call the color fill or the solid shape to do the, the coloring. For the stamens, you've got an extra stamp here for the stamens as well. If you want to color the uh, stamp the stamens heavier, you can just use this outline here on its own um, without the the um, lined outline and just st stamp the stamen. You can stamp the outline and then color it with your coloring tools, such as your stamp and write markers, which you'll see on my card, um, which I've done, or your um, you can, well, any of your coloring tools, really. You can use your stamp and blends. You can use sponge daubers. Um, you can use water coloring, whatever you like. And then the two, so the two-step component is you stamp this one first in first generation, and then you stamp this one in second generation. So I had a little test with um, the different in colors and then also stamping them in different ways, trying the outline first and then the um, the solid shape and then vice versa, just to try and work out how they best stamp. So um, yeah, I sort of found with most of them to stamp the outline first was better because that's a heavier image and then to do the second generation um, color of the, um, the solid color, which is when you stamp off first so you can overlay the little flowers as you can see here and then i did the extra little um shadow behind them on this one so yeah a really fun stamp set to play with so that's the one that we're going to we're going to um play with today and the dies let's have a look at the dies so the dies um You've got the dies to cut out the flowers. So all of these flowers and the leaves, they all cut out. And then you've got um, these additional, uh, the additional foliage here and this one here. And then you've got all these cute little flowers that you can um, die cut and layer inside of each other, etc. So it's a really fun set to play with. All right. Do you want to see the card that we're making today then? Using all of the in colors, here is our card that we're using today. Uh, that we're creating today, I should say. We are using it as a template. <laughs> they are so pretty, aren't they, Glenda? They're a really pretty color collection. All right, so what we're going to do today, so what I've done with these flowers is I stamped them in um, Memento Tuxedo Black. And then I've colored them using my Stampin' Write markers. So I wanted to... Um, 
today when we create this card we're going to change it up a little bit we're going to change the colors ever so slightly um, this this panel here is going to be a different color and then for the flowers we're going to do the two-step stamping using the inks rather than using the stamp and write markers and then we'll compare and i'll show you the difference between um, the two different looks so if you want like more depth in color then the stamp and write markers or um, the stamp and blends even would be great but if you want a softer color then the two-step stamping is a great way to go so that's what we're going to be creating today i have got everything all prepped ready to go so here is our kit i will get this up on my blog um, at some stage this week so i will have all of the measurements there for you um, for that but i do have the measurements today for you too so i can go through them quickly um, now there's lots of little pieces I did I did cut some additional sentiment labels just in case because you know when you're filming um, boo-boos happen but there are lots and lots of pieces in this card it's a very simple um, layout actually to create very simple layout with just the three panels but there's lots of pieces because I've got lots of layers so um, I'll show you each of those all right so um, here in Australia, we work in metri metric measurements, so that's what I will be giving you today. Um, our card bases are a different size to the American card bases, so you just use your standard card bases, your standard layers. Um, use my layout to um, adapt to your size what fits for your um, card base if you are working from um, America with different size cardstock. So this card base measures 21 centimeters by 14.85 and it's scored and folded at 10.5 centimeters we're going to have a landscape card today okay so we're going to turn it that way we've got a matte layer of basic white and this one measures 4.25 by 9.9 .9 centimeters now if you don't catch these measurements don't worry because they are going to be on my blog okay so then we're going to need three layers three matte layers for our panels these are all the same and i'm using the petunia pop this time so on this card i used the let me get it right peach pie but today we're changing it and we're going to use um petunia pop this is really testing me today with these colors <laughs> um so this one measures 4.35 by 9.3 centimeters okay so you need three of those then we need some dsp so we've got that beautiful in color dsp and this time i've got peach pie summer splash and pretty in pink okay so we're changing up this one here and this layer measures 4.15 by 9.1 okay you might wonder why i've got the 0.5 it's so that i had an even border around the edge if you don't want to worry about the 0.5s then don't worry about the 0.5s um, but you'll just have a you might have a slightly uneven border around the edges okay all right then we've got um our circle so i've already die cut the circle i'm going to show you the dies that i used for that this is another new die set it does have a coordinating stamp set as well. It's called the um, Spotlight on Nature dies. And they coordinate with the Spotlight on Nature stamp set, which I'm not using today, but it's a beautiful stamp set um, that I'm using for a blog hop later in the week, actually. So these are all the dies that you get in this die set. So you've got the three different patterns okay can you see those three different patterns there and you've got them in the um four different sizes so you've got one two three four and then you've got one two three four and so on okay so they are beautiful oh they're gorgeous aren't they megan they're so beautiful yeah so if you like a good circle die um, that has a little bit more than just the plain circle these ones are gorgeous because they've got the detail in them so we're using this one here so it's uh this one so it's the third the third smallest um 
that design it's like a, it's almost like a die cut stitched kind of um yeah so to cut that one you'll need a piece that's um eight centimeters by eight centimeters i did that one ahead of time just to save a little bit of time you don't need to see me die cutting a circle <laughs> all right then we've got um our um, piece for our foliage so this is the shy shamrock which is the same as the card base and this one is 6.5 by 10.5 centimeters and then um, this piece is for stamping and die cutting our flowers so this one oh sorry this one was um six by ten this one is 6.5 by 10.5 and then our little sentiment strip is 1.5 by 7.5 centimeters okay all right so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to die cut our foliage because we then want to add some wink of stella to make it shiny now the good thing is we are we're using the cardstock today because that's what i'm talking about um is the cardstock but there is some shimmer paper in the in colors and it is stunning 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 i actually have it um, and I was playing with it the other day, but I'm not using that today. Instead, we're going to use the Wink of Stella. So I don't know if you can see that shimmer on there under the lights. It might be a little bit hard to, to see, depending on the angle. Oh, there you go. I think you can see it there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to do that first so that we can give our um, Wink of Stella time to dry. So I'm using my... Um, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine today and where do I put my dies all right and the die that we're using is this one here okay so we'll take that one off there I haven't put these ones on magnetic sheets yet I did however with my circles because I know that those circle dies are going to get a lot of use so all right so I've got my my base plate number one my clear plate number two and then I've got another clear plate number two for over the top I'm going to put my cardstock down, my dies with the cutting edge face down onto my cardstock, and then another clear plate over the top and run that through. Alrighty. Now you'll notice that my my cardstock has stuck in my die and you might think oh well that's that's going to be a pain to get out no it's not <laughs> because what i've got in here in my little container is my die brush so this die brush is an extra attachment that you can get to attach to your take your pick tool it just screws into the end where your putty normally is oh, where's my other one here we go so this is the putty end Okay, so you just unscrew that and then you just screw the die brush into the end. It comes with two foam um, pads as well, which you use with your dies. So I'm going to put the die face down that way. So you've got the holes, the release holes face up and we're going to run the die brush over this now this is what i did with the circle one as well because the circle one had all those little bits and pieces that around the edges and it got them out beautifully okay so you can see all the little bits have come out now and it's released the die from it's released the cardstock from the die and it's just come out there we've got one little bit that's just stuck in there so we'll just go over that here we go. So the die is nice and clean. Isn't that awesome? Now, um, one thing I'll let you know, before I went live today, I pulled this out. I had it stored on my shelf, just open like that. And it had collected a lot of dust. It was on the bottom of my, um, the bottom of my trolley, actually. And um, it had collected a lot of dust. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to chuck this one out and I'll open up the other one and use the other one. But what I did is I took it outside, I gave it a good brush off, a bit of a shake, and then, you know how you got those sticky um, lint rollers? I ran a sticky lint roller over it, and it removed all of the, um, the dust from it. 
so and now it's like new again well there's a little bit a few little bits of um cardstock fragments but that's about it yeah and I just am now, so what I'm going to do now, I do keep it in this little container because it makes it so much easier to collect all of the little pieces. Then I can just tip that into the bin. But now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start storing it with the lid on to keep the dust out of it. So I learned from, yeah, learn from my experience. <laughs> so there you go. All right, so I hope that tip helps somebody. I like to give you little tips along the way. All right, let's bring in some grid paper and we're going to um, get our Wink of Stella brush. Now, where did I put that down? Had that before. Where did I put it? Put it back in there. Yes, I did. I did put it back in the right spot. So always give your Wink of Stella a good shake. Now, this is a pretty old one, this one. I've had this one on the go for a while. The new ones come with more of a um, clear lid like this. It's sort of opaque. It's not really clear, but it's more opaque. Um, but I'm using up this old one first. Sometimes I have a couple on the go because sometimes um, my daughter Amber and I are using them at the same time. So we're just going to go over all of that with the Wink of Stella to make it nice and shiny. And it takes just a few minutes to dry. It's pretty quick. It doesn't take too long. Who's crafting along with me today? Anyone crafting? I'm going to look up at those comments in a moment as soon as I finished colouring this. All right. So, of course, you can see why I've got the grid paper underneath. Just use grid paper or scrap paper or whatever you have. And... Um, Protect your, your work surface, or your desktop. There we go. Okay, so we're going to set that aside to dry now. Put those back in there now. All right, so we'll set that aside to dry while we move on to the other, the other parts. Oh, hey, Julie, how are you going? Great to have you with us. Okay. All right, so let's next stamp our um, sentiment and our flowers, and then we can get on to um, doing all the pretty parts. Actually, the sentiment, I might... Oh, no, I'm going to do the sentiment as well. I was just thinking I might change the colour of the sentiment, but no, I'm going to do it in the same colour I did it before. Um, so I'm going to use the Shy Shamrock to stamp the sentiment. Okay, I love this color, it's so pretty. And the sentiment I'm using is um, uh, this one here, have a blessed day, or a blessed day, depending on how you like to pronounce that. Oh, actually, before I do that, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to put a little um, flag in the end of this. Now this piece is 1.5 centimeters wide, if you still have the um, banners pick a punch, you could use that just to banner the end. It has retired, however, so I'm keeping mine though because I love my banners pick a punch. But um, I'll show you a different way of doing it, and probably most of you have seen this. So this piece is one and a half centimeters wide. In fact, this one's a little bit wider. I didn't measure this one very well. Wait, let me just see. Is that one a little bit wider than the? Oh, it is too. That must have been the end piece. It's a little bit wider. Okay, this one is 1.5. So I'm just going to measure 0 0.75. It's a bit hard to see. And I'm just going to put a little pencil mark there. And take my snips. And I'm just going to snip up just a little way with the tip of my snips. Then I'm going to go from my corner to the top of that snip to just cut that little wedge out. I might need to go up a little bit higher. Okay, like that. And then because I'm right-handed, rather than trying to go khaki-handed in like that, which you can if you want to, I'm just going to flip it over so that I'm doing it at the same angle the other way. And there we've got the little flag in the end there of our piece. Okay, nice and easy. All right, now let's stamp our sentiment. We're going to stamp that over to the left-hand end. 
Let's see, I've just got to get my head over this to try and get that straight. There we go. I'm not using my stamp and pierce mat today because I found with this stamp set, um, oh, it's actually a bit crooked. I found with this stamp set that I didn't really um, need it today. So is that super, that's super noticeable? I think it is. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to cheat because I've already got one cut. So I'm just going to go snip like that. And then see, this is why I always cut extra um, sentiment labels because you just never know. And for most of my classes, I do that as well when I'm preparing the kits for my, um, my class ladies. I like to do that too because nine times out of ten we need those extra sentiment labels as in last like today. So let's see if we can get this one a bit straighter. And if not, then we're just going to go with the first one. See, it's probably because I didn't have my head right over the top. Let's see how we go this time. That's better. There we go. All right. Isn't that a lovely sentiment? Okay, now let's give that one a clean. So I'm going to stamp it off onto my um, scrap paper first, which is just off camera. And we'll give that a clean. Hi, Helen, how are you? Great to have you here today. Are you going to card making this afternoon? I know you usually have your card making on Monday, Monday afternoons. All right, now with the flowers, we are going to stamp. Now, where are, hang on two secs. Oh, I did, okay. I was just thinking, where did I put those other ones reaching across there? All right, so we are going to have our large flower. So I think we'll still do the, flower, the, the flowers in the same colours. And, but I want to show you what they're going to look like when they are um, two-step stamped rather than stamped and then coloured in. All right, so we'll start with our large flower, which is the Petunia Pop. And we're going to start with the outline first. So we're doing that first generation, which is your first inking of your stamp. Okay, then... We're going to bring back in that grid paper that has our little piece drying there. We're going to ink up, and this time we're going to use second generation. So we're inking up our stamp. We're going to stamp off just quickly on scrap paper, and that gives us a second generation of ink. Okay, so it just softens it a little bit. Okay, so it's a little bit blotchy this time because the ink pad is very, very wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my old bone folder. So this is my old inky bone folder. I'm going to, if you don't have an old inky bone folder or a spare bone folder like, like me, you might have a plastic spoon or you can do it with a metal spoon too. Or you might have an old credit card or an old gift card that you've used that you don't need anymore. You can do that with this. I mean, you can do this with that. <laughs> so I'm just pressing that ink down into the ink pad okay and then of course you, you're going to get excess ink on your whatever it is you're using so just give that a clean on your um, baby wipe or you can use a damp cloth if you don't like to use baby wipes okay so let's give that another go and see how we um, go this time we'll do another one okay so tap 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 stamp our outline there we go. And tap, tap, tap. Stamp off. Now it is going to be a little bit blotchy anyway because we are stamping off, but that's kind of the, the look that you get when you're stamping off. So there we go. So there's there's the, the flower. It gives more of a sort of a softer but sort of speckly look. Um, but if you like doing watercoloring or something like that, you could try that. Um, whatever technique you like. But the two-step stamping just makes it so much easier because you've already got your colour there done. 
okay. Um, we'll clean all the stamps at the end because we'll just keep going with these colours. We want two of the peach pie. <laughs> Make sure I say the right one. Okay, we want two peach pies. So let's... One, two, and then we've got the, the colour here for them as well. And I'll just show you the difference, okay? I'll stamp it first generation, the colour the color fill or the solid colour, um, just so you can see the difference. I'll make sure I get this lined up. Okay, that's first generation. You can see it's quite heavy. But if, you, if that's the colour you like. Now, again, this ink pad is quite inky. So if I scrape that down like I did with the Petunia Pop, um, you, it wouldn't be so blotchy like that. But because I'm just going to stamp off, there we go. Okay, can you see the difference? But again, remember, this is a very, very inky stamp. So it wouldn't be that heavy if, if I removed a little bit of the ink from that stamp just because it's brand new and this is probably only like the second time I've used it today oops stamp off second generation there we go so we've got the nice pretty colors nice soft colors there okay and then we'll do our pretty in pink now I do need to clean that one because we've just we're going to be swapping colors so let's just give that one a little clean on our stamp and chamois if you don't have a stamp and chamois you need one they are awesome <laughs> they're so great for cleaning your stamps they're so quick and easy and look they get them beautifully clean okay um oh that's good helen you're great no card making has been put off until next week it's the lady who takes it has got her uncle's funeral oh that's a shame oh that's sad funerals are never fun are they they can i mean we can give our loved ones a beautiful send-off though of course but it's always sad isn't it oh well it's good to have you joining us today helen all right there we go so there we've got um the soft pink i'll see if i can fit i might fit another one in here just so i can show you the difference in the color if we were doing full strength again this is an inky ink pad because it's brand new so it's full of ink and you can see the difference in the color to doing full strength or first generation and then this one is colored with second generation so you can see the difference there okay all righty make sure we close that um Julie said, these flowers remind me of the two-tone flora stamp set that's retiring. Yes, and you use that one a lot, did you, Julie? Oh, that's good. Oh, it's great that there's going to be another current one that is um, similar that you will fall in love with as well, I'm sure. Great. All right, so we give these all a clean now. As I always say, clean your stamp straight away. You'll notice that they do pick up a little bit of pigment, the photopolymer stamps. And see these two, they look sort of a bit pinky now because of that purple in the, um, the Petunia Pop. But it doesn't affect the stamp or how it, how it works. So long as you clean it, then you're good to go. And I always like to double check. One, to make sure they're clean, but also to dry them off before I put them away just by stamping after cleaning them just stamp onto some scrap paper okay beautifully clean there we go and i think our wink of cellar is just about dry now too all right now we're going to die cut these i am going to cut them apart however because we are going to die cut them individually and i don't want to run them through because i know my plates are terribly scratched up and i don't want to um I don't want to damage the rest of the cardstock, so I'm just going to cut them apart. And look, I'm going to keep these extra ones because I might use them on another project. Okay. Let's 
So we've got our plates, same as before. Number one base plate, number two clear plate. We can put two of our dies through together this time. So we'll do a large flower and a small flower. The dies this time are going to be these two here. So we'll take those two off. And then I'm going to show you how to put it all together. And I've got something else to tell you too. So stick with me for a minute because let me just die cut these and then I'll tell you about something exciting that's coming. So hang with me for two secs while I just die cut this first lot. There we go. I'm just using a little bit of my post-it tape just to hold those dies in place. And the post-it tape I just got from my local stationery store. We have office works here um, in Sydney. I'm not sure if they're, oh, I know that they are in other states in Australia, but um, whatever your local stationery store is. There we go. So there's those two. Now, to save time, I did prepare some ahead of time, so I won't die cut these ones as well. You've seen me do that. Um, I've got some extra ones here. Oh, in fact, I didn't even die cut that one properly. So there we go. Luckily, I had those other ones already done. I'll pop my dies away and I'll tell you about the exciting thing that's coming up, which um, is something that you might be interested in. All right. So we've got all of our bits now ready to put, whoops, ready to put our card together. Okay, but before we do that, let me tell you about something exciting that's coming up. On the 1st of May, there is a special joining offer coming um, with the starter kit. And all of those products that I'm using today, you can get for free as part of your starter kit. So Stampin' Up! will actually add them in to your starter kit at no extra cost. So you'll still get to choose um, $235 worth of product, only pay $169, and then on top of that, they're going to throw in the In Colour Ink Pads, the full pack of um, assortment coloured cardstock, the full pack of the Designer Series paper that I already showed you, and the full pack of the markers, $144 worth of value. They're going to add that to your starter kit for no extra cost. It's only available during May, so from the 1st to the 31st of May. Um, and you'll get, so you get that plus the, what do you normally get? You normally get about $66 worth of free product, or you do get $66 worth of free product. So what's $144 and $66? I didn't even add that up. What's that? $210? Is it $210 worth of product for free in your starter kit when you join during May? Isn't that amazing? So you get all of this. You'll get these. You'll get a full pack of these. This is only one sheet of each of these, but you'll get a full pack of these. And I think there's, um, I think you get four sheets of each color in, in the full pack. Okay, so you get those. And then you get the DSP as well. There's your, there's your DSP. So you get all of that for, for free in the starter kit. So there you go. So if you've got a big wish list, we've got the catalog coming up, the new catalog coming up. So there's going to be a lot of stuff you want out of there. If you want to get that all at a discount, you'll get a 20% discount once you've joined. Okay. So you purchase the starter kit, but then from there you get a 20% discount on all those new products in the new catalog. Um, plus you'll get to, if you would like to join with me and join my team, you'll get all the team perks, you get all the demonstrator perks, we get the customer discounts, and then we get our demonstrator discounts on top of that. Um, what else can I tell you? We do a lot of fun things in our team. We've got a team Facebook group and there's lots, always lots of things going on in there. We have team challenges. I do um, prize draws every month, recognitions. 
We have a crafting session together each month um, during our team gathering. Uh, we've got a team lunch coming up this month. All different sorts of things. So if this sounds interesting for you and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or you're looking to join here in Australia, then feel free to get in contact with me. I'd love to answer your questions um, so you can decide if it's for you. But And there's no lock-in period. So you can join and then you can drop at any time. You don't have to stay. You're not locked in to stay for any, you know, extended period of time or anything like that. Um, and you can just join for the discount. You don't have to, um, you don't have to hold classes or do workshops or do Facebook lives or any of that sort of stuff that I do. You can simply just join for the discount and enjoy the, the crafting community. So if you would like to um, to do that, look, I've got a, a little a little flyer here, which is about, it says join today, but you have to wait until the 1st of May <laughs> for this special. <laughs> so you have to wait till the 1st of May. Um, but yeah, there's a little, a little looky of um, the products. So yeah, so there you go. So how cool is that? It's such a great special. So, in fact, it's probably one of the best specials I've seen them have for a really long time. Um, and to get all that stuff, all those beautiful new ink colours for free, if I wasn't already a demonstrator, I'd be joining. So, and then you get the discount as well. So, and you can stay and get the discount for as long as you want. And then if you don't want it anymore, then you can just leave. So, there you go. So, let me know if you'd like more information about that. <laughs> Um, hey Vicky, how are you? Great to have you with us. You love all the five in colors. They're, they are really happy colors, aren't they? All right, let's get this card put together. Now, if you, um, if you want to ask me any questions, feel free to either email me. You can email me at Mandy's Papercraft Creations um, at gmail.com or at um, hello at mandywitherby.com because I do have a direct email address as well. My own, well, I have two email addresses. Um, you can send me a message in Messenger and you can do that via my business page here where you're watching this video live today. So, um, yeah, lots of different ways you can contact me. All right, so we're just going to layer up the, our DSP panels now that we... Um, had prepared earlier and I did give all the measurements for this um, at the beginning of the video so if you miss that feel free to go back later and uh, catch those but it will also be on my blog at some stage this week when I can get it up there it's a really busy time at the moment um, and yeah so I am I am a little bit behind with my my blogging but I do have a blog I'm part of a blog hop design team and we do have a blog hop coming up this week later this week and um i designed the or i came up i didn't design but i came up with the challenge for this week so i have to get my project in because i'm the one who came up with the <laughs> the theme for this week <laughs> so all right so now this is just um a layer of basic white and it's the reason that I have this layer is just to make that DSP pop because I thought if I put it straight onto the Shy Shamrock um, green, we're kind of going to lose it a little bit. So I thought by adding the white layer just makes those colors pop a bit more. So we'll just line that up. Hopefully I'm getting that straight-ish. I'm kind of doing this at a weird angle at the moment. Okay, now we've just got to get our panels on there and try and get them lined up, um, sort of centred. So, oops, a little bit of something, something on there. And I've got them in the wrong order. We want this one in the middle, and the pink on this side. And with the designs, just have a look at the, the paper. So what I want to have is I want to have the two end ones um, it depends on how you've cut your paper like this one I've actually cut this one differently to the other one so it doesn't matter too much but these two are identical so I'm going to flip this one up the other way so that they don't look the same okay 
so that the patterns aren't. You can have the patterns all flowing if you want them to be exactly the same, um, but I don't want them exactly the same. All right, so I'm just going to line these up so that I've got an even border around the top, the bottom, and that outside edge. And that's what I'm going to do on this one as well, on the other end. And then this middle one will just be kind of lined up between the two of those end pieces. Whoops, they are going to slide around a little bit until I stick them down. So let's just get this one adhered first and then we'll work. I kind of feel like I'm working a bit backwards, working right to left instead of left to right. It's a bit backwards, isn't it? That's okay. It doesn't matter which way we do it. The end result will be the same. All right, so just get that lined up. That looks pretty straight, I think. There we go. We'll do the one on the other side, on the other end, I should say. So what is everyone thinking about the new catalogue? Are you loving it? I love the new layout of the new catalogue. I think it's awesome. And I'm learning to navigate and find things because it's, it's different to what we're used to. So it is going to take a little bit of getting used to, but, uh, but I really love it. I love how it's um, laid out and I love the contents pages and the index. They are a lifesaver to help find things. Um, they're very, very helpful. So make sure if you miss those, make sure you look for them. The contents page is in the front and then you've got your index at the very back. So be sure to look for those to help you find things. Um, but yeah, I love, I've got all mine um, tabbed now. I put all my little sticky tabs in there to label the um, main sections that I need to reference all the time. So um, yeah, so that's really helpful as well to put little tabs in there. You like the layout, Julie? Fantastic. You also... Also, the DSP is so pretty. Yeah, beautiful DSP that's coming. Um, you think you're sold? Awesome. It's very different, but you're finding that you're using the index a lot. Yes, same. Yeah, as I'm getting used to it, I'm, I'm doing that too, Julie. Yeah, good. I'm glad that you're, um, that you're loving it. All right, so we've got our little piece here that we glitzed earlier. It's nice and dry now. All right, so we need some Stampin' Dimensionals. And you've probably seen me talk about this tip before, and I did post it, um, I actually posted it in my VIP customer group the other day. Did you know that I have a VIP customer group for my very important people customers? Um, I should call it the VIC, very important customers. No, very important people, it works. <laughs> um, but I take a fine tip Sharpie and I just do, draw a line on the back of my stamp and dimensionals, and then that way, when I take my dimensionals off, whoops, let's put it up, up, we want it upside down, that's upside down, we want it upside down when we're putting dimensionals on it, um, we can see if we've removed the backings or not. Because how many times do you sit there under the light trying to see if you've removed the backings or not? So now I can see when I've removed the backings, see? Those two are gone, these two have still got the lines, so I know that they need to come off. So there we go. Now I want to make sure I'm going to be um, sticking my little sentiment under there. So I want to be sure that I've got a spot in here where I can slip that sentiment in. So I'm making sure that I'm putting it, where do I want it? About there-ish. So we'll go over there. Making sure where my dimensionals are so that I can slip that little that little piece under there. With my original one, I actually had to trim it down a little bit to get it in under there, but that should be good. All right, so then we're going to adhere this one now. The sentiment label's just going to be adhered flat. I'm just gonna tuck that end in under there. There we go. Good, good, good. Um, I'm going to get some, oh, actually, yeah, I'll bring these dimensionals back in. I'll adhere the foliage 
are those circles that I'm using. This die here, Julie. Oh, you might have missed it. I showed those dies um, earlier. Yeah, you might have jumped on after I showed them. They are um, the new the new Spotlight on Nature dies. And you get... How many dies do you actually get in this set? 12 altogether. 12 dies and there's the four different... Uh, sorry, the three different patterns and there's four sizes in each of the patterns. They're beautiful. And there is a stamp set that coordinates so you can get it together with the Spotlight on Nature um, stamp set and get it as a bundle or you can purchase them individually. If you if you love the stamp set though, um, purchase it as a bundle because you'll save yourself 10%. So they'll be available from the 1st of um, May. So Wednesday, Wednesday they'll be available. All right, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on the back here of my foliage. Yes, I think these um, circles are going to be very, very popular. I love them already. I love a good um, solid shape die because they're always so handy. They come, you're like, you just, I use them all the time. All right. So we're going to pop our foliage down here and take that up towards the corner, sort of up towards the corner up there and just adhere that down there. Oh, I've got a little bit of glue. All right, then we're going to pop our large flower down. So I'll just put a couple of dimensionals on here. Oh, let's go with three. So I'm putting them sort of towards the middle because I'm going to be tucking some of those flowers in behind there. So we're going to pop this one down here. We'll put him at a little bit of an angle there, like that. Then we're going to have one of these um, peach pie flowers sitting on top so we just want a little bit of dimensional just under this petal here so let's just use up some of our little edge pieces my this was a sheet of minis which I finished but oh actually no I didn't there's a couple of little minis still in here in the corners so I'll grab one of those now which which way was it that I wanted to have my flower that way so I'm going to pop it under this petal here there we go and then this part of the flower is going to sit on this flower so then I'm just going to add some glue to that part there so that'll sit on the flower and attach there you don't need too much okay and then that's going to sit there like that Okay, then the little pink one, he's just going to have some glue. He's going to be popped in underneath the edge there of the petunia pop big flower. Okay, so tuck that one in there and sort of have it a little bit underneath this one too. Okay, and then this one is going to go on the foliage. Tuck that one in under here. There we go. All right, so now let's add some bling. You'll notice that I don't have any ribbon on this card. I was struggling a little bit with the, the ribbon. Um, I'll show you why in a moment. But the bling that I'm using, so there's two different in-colour um, packs of bling. So both of them are included in my um, product shares. So this is the 2024 to 2026 in color shimmer gems. And these ones are the shimmy, shimmery shiny ones. And I want to use these ones because I'm using the shimmery, um, well, I'm, I glitzed the um, foliage. But then we've also got, if you prefer a matte finish on your embellishments, We've got these ones, which are the 2024, 2026, six in color resin dots. Okay, so you can see the difference there. These ones are kind of softer. These ones give a more vibrant color. 
So it depends on your project and what look you're going for as to which ones, um, yeah, you can use. So, but it's totally up to you. So let me grab my Take Your Pick tool. All right, first of all, I'm going to pop a couple of embellishments just over here at the side, and I'm using the Petunia Pop over there. Then, and that was a piece I already had cut. Um, now, I've already used some of these, as you can see, but we've got all the five in colours in there. And I'm just wondering whether, what would it look like if I swapped up the um, gems rather than having colour on colour, which I did with the first one? What if I swapped up the colours and mix and matched? Yeah, I like that actually. There we go. All right, I'm just going to pop that straight back in the packet because I've got a few cut ones in there that might fall out. I don't want to lose those. So let's pop that back in there. There we go. So, so many beautiful in-colour products. And we've got the shimmer paper as well, which um, I think I showed, I think I showed, was it last week or the week before when I did an unboxing? I showed that. All right. So let's have a look at the difference between the two cards to begin with, okay? So this one is coloured with the stamp and write markers. These ones are stamped, two-step stamping with the ink pads. Okay, so that's the difference in the colour of the flowers. So it really depends on if you want to go for a softer look or a more vibrant, bold look. But then I don't have any ribbon on there. So I've got all of the in-colour ribbons here. Aren't they just so pretty? I love these. They're so gorgeous. I love ribbon and bling. Anyone that knows me love, knows that I love ribbon and bling. And I put ribbon and bling on most of my projects. Definitely bling. Occasionally I miss the ribbon. So I made these little knots, these little faux knots with some of the didn't make them in all the colours actually. Let's do a, um, a purple one. And it's as simple as taking your ribbon and tying it in a knot. And I'm not wasting my ribbon by doing this because I will use these on a project at some point. Even if I don't use them today, I will use them at some point. So I'm just going to trim the ribbon. Just know that this ribbon does like to fray so handle it gently it's a very very soft ribbon um, but it does tend to want to fray you could put a little bit of fray stop on the edges or something if you're concerned about the fraying um, but once you get on your project once it's sitting there sitting still it'll be fine it's just when you're fiddling with it so just be mindful of that so and I don't have it in the I think it was the, yeah, the Shy Shamrock. So let's tie one in the Shy Shamrock. And we'll have a little play and just see if we can position this ribbon somewhere. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's going to work because I was playing with it um, when I was designing this last night. I was playing with the ribbon and I just couldn't get it to, and then I had another play today and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where to put it or if it even really needs it. So see what you all reckon. I'll move those out of the way. All right, so there we've got one of every colour. Look at all those pretty little bows. Aren't they just so cute, those little bows? All right, so originally I was wanting to put one. See, I don't think the purple, the purple can't go there because you've got the purple flower, right? So it's because I really wanted one to sit just there. And that's a nice sized little bow, but what about a pink one? Pink one might be a bit close to there. Then we've got the peach pie, but is the peach pie too close to the flower? There. Then we've got the summer splash. That one's a bit bigger, so it almost covers up the sentiment. It's subtle, isn't it? And then this one, which is a little bit bigger, I've tied this one a bit bigger. Actually, let's pull it a bit. I might trim this one up, make it a little bit smaller. Sometimes I think cards 
don't need a ribbon. Did I even say that? Did I just say that? <laughs> I don't know. If there's a lot going on, sometimes it can just overpower it a bit. But I don't mind that too because it kind of offsets the, the um, foliage. But that's where I wanted to have one. The other idea I had was popping one up here in the corner. But then it was kind of just sitting on its own. And I know that some people do do that, but I don't tend to have ribbon just sort of sitting on its own. So I don't know. What does everyone reckon? Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you think it needs a ribbon? Do you like it up in the top corner? Do you like this one down here with the foliage? I don't think I can do purple there though. Maybe the pink. Maybe if I tie this one a little bit tighter, I could get the pink one down there. I've only got a small space down here to, to fit it. No, I think the pink blends in too much here with the paper, doesn't it? This one is the Summer Splash. So tie that one a bit tighter. Do you find when you tie your ribbons, like there's always one side that looks nicer with the knot? It's subtle, but it's there. Um, oh, thank you, Glenda. Thank you. And see how I changed these panels as well? And I changed the, the matte layer. So rather than have the um, peach pie, I've got the petunia pop for the layers. So which one do you prefer? Tell me which card you prefer. Do you prefer the one on the left or the one on the right? Which one do you prefer? So I'm just not sure about the ribbon. Or do I just leave the ribbon off altogether and not have a ribbon? I don't know. Actually, that one could probably fit there too. But is that a bit, is that just sort of sitting? It's not really sitting anywhere, is it? It's just, I do like it just sitting there. That one or this one this one coordinates with the um the foliage i think the one that coordinates with the foliage is a bit better um you like the right one glenda and leave the ribbon off yep julie you think leave it off as well yeah that's what i was kind of thinking too but i'm like my goodness can i make a card without a ribbon <laughs> all right i'll leave it off thank you ladies thanks for your opinion um, I'll save these little bows because I'll be able to use them on another project. They're just so cute, aren't they? Well, there you go. So there's my projects for today for you. So, yeah, tell me, let me know um, which ones. So we've got a few people on here. Glenda's the only one that has commented so far about which one she prefers. Do you prefer the one on the left or the one on the right? Do you like the brighter, bolder colours or do you like the softer, muted colours of the flowers? Which one do you prefer? Remember, all these products will be um, available from the 1st of May. And we've got the amazing um, starter kit offer as well. So those products that I've used today, the inks, the cardstock assortment pack, the pack of designer series paper, and the pack of the five in-color stamp and write markers, you can get for free in your starter kit. Um, it's $144 worth of value and you can get them for free within your starter kit. You still get to choose $235 of product as well. Plus, uh, and you're only going to pay $169 and you'll get free shipping. So you get all of that for free. You get your free shipping. You'll only pay $169 and you get to choose another $235 worth of product. So you might like to even choose the stamp sets and the dies that I used today. Um, so if that's something that you might like, then please uh, definitely let me know. I would love to give you more information about joining my team. Uh, Helen says, definitely like the one on the right with the softer colors. Yeah. Julie says, I love, I like both, but the one on the right is my favorite. Yeah. Everyone's going towards the softer colors. The black outline really makes it heavier too, doesn't it? makes it so um, I tried um, basic gray but then when I colored it I lost all the detail um, so it was either black or not at all kind of thing <laughs> but it does make it a lot heavier doesn't it yeah 
yeah oh that's really interesting that everybody um yeah likes the softer colors they are very pretty aren't they oh thank you for um commenting everyone well i'm gonna flip the camera back up now so that i can say goodbye to you all and let you go on with your evening so let me just cover up the camera and i'll do a little flippity flip here we go flippy flip I don't like to make everybody dizzy, so I always like to cover up the camera when I do this. Because it is a bit of adjusting here. There we go. Oh, wow. That was really wonky, wasn't it? <laughs> there we go. And let's just adjust those lights. Okay, so there we go. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed that. And I hope that it gave you um, some ideas. Now, this, this particular layout, you can use that with any products that you have. Um, so any DSP would work. That's your designer series paper, if you don't know the, the shortened version, as we, we call it, the DSP. Um, any particular, not any particular, any designer series paper that you have, any pattern paper is what I meant to say, would work. Any stamp set would work. Um, you just need like a circle die and a sentiment tag, which you can easily make yourself. So, yeah, so I hope that that, um, that inspires you to be creative and try that layout. If you try that layout, please let me know. I'd love to, even if you use different DSP, um, please let me know. I'd love to see your beautiful projects. So I love it when um, people share their projects with me. I sometimes get um, emails from some of my newsletter subscribers as well. And they share their projects with me and I love that I get so excited when I see their emails coming in so uh, so feel free to email me um, now I didn't mention my host code now this is my April host code so if you're shopping with me in the next couple of days this one will still apply so please be sure to use that when you are shopping with me there will be a new host code from the 1st of May um, and I'll put that up on all of my um, on my Facebook page etc so that you've got that if you are shopping with me and then with orders over $75 I will send you a thank you gift okay is there any more questions does anyone need any help with anything or have anything else they'd like to add or ask me um, Oh, the comments have gone quiet. Everyone's all good. All right, fantastic. Well, I hope you all have a, a really great week. Oh, look, my little brooch is twisted. <laughs> she was, she was um, begging. She was up on her back, hind legs begging. There we go. Let's let's straighten her up a little bit. <laughs> um, it's it's funny. Some of my brooches. Um, it's, it's not the brooches. It's my my clothing. Some of my clothing is quite thin. So thinner t-shirts and things like that. Sometimes the brooches don't sit very well. So often I have to put a little um, foam pad or something behind them in the pin when I pin them in. But I didn't today because I put it on so quickly. So that's why it's moving around everywhere because I didn't put my little foam pad behind it to hold it in place. Um, but anyway, I hope you all have a great week. I hope that you get some crafting done. And um, yeah, as I said, if there's anything I can help you with, remember the brand new catalogue goes live on Wednesday. So exciting. You'll all be able to um, purchase from this beautiful new catalogue and um, I'll be able to do a walkthrough with you when I can as well. When that go Once that goes live, I can show you the inside, show you um, where a few things are too that might easily be missed. Um, yeah, so I will, I will try to get to that um, when it goes live. Now also to remember, I've got my product shares as well. Um, scan the QR code there or you can go to my links. I'll add the links to this video as well so that you can um, go there and have a look and jump on those product shares. Product shares, um, my product shares are available for demonstrators, for team members and for my customers as well um, or for anybody who would like to, to jump on those. So um, feel free to take a look and see what's included in those shares and see if you would like to um, get some of these beautiful new products at a really affordable price. Um, so you can get crafting early with those um, well, not early, but 
get a whole heap of that product rather than having to wait for a long time to, you know, save up to purchase it. Shares are a great way of doing it at an affordable price. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. Thank you for your support. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week, if not sooner. Um, uh, I always go live on Monday afternoons at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. No more daylight savings at the moment. How sad. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. Happy crafting. Bye.